Good day, hi, and welcome. I am freezing. I am very, very cold right now. Oh. It's not super bad, but it's cold enough. Uh, great night. You won't be able to see me. I'm just going to let the car warm up a bit. Oh, <laughs> by a bit, I mean a lot. Uh, don't want the windows all fogged up. It's already fogged enough out there. Okay. Uh, what a fantastic, fantastic night. I got some awesome footage, guys. Um, I got... Uh, I, I did pretty good. We, we, I, I got to belt up some Black Sabbath tonight. Uh, didn't quite go as planned, but it, it sounded pretty cool, I gotta say. Oh, boy. Hey, man. All right, so. Oh, yeah, I'll let them go first, so. I can't. Uh, I don't know which way they want to go, so. I guess everybody's got the same idea. I'm gonna let everything warm up before I go on the leg. No, I'll let them go. Okay, so let me tell you what kind of night it was. It was a very rocking night. Yes, there was uh, a little bit of a jam. I, I jammed with, uh, what's her name? Uh, it didn't go quite according to plan, but it was still really cool, so. Uh, you know, hey, what can you say, right? It was just, just a good night. Um, then, uh, next to that, I had, uh, what else did I have going on? Had, uh, ah, I just, I pulled up a few people. I was uh, way off time, you know. That, that was me. It wasn't them. Um, uh, Starship Enterprise pulled up a little slow here. Just want to run into anybody. Back in from now on. Always in the path to do like a 16 point turn so I'm getting in like a small little front of like this. Alright. Not lots of room. Still. I have to go out up the other way. Sorry, I'll get into the, the shield in a second. Halloween night. Uh, what a what a what a lively night! Like it was almost all rock and roll tonight. I mean, not rock and roll, but it was just it was a rock and night. Uh, so I went up. I, the only I only did two songs tonight that I practiced. One of which was oh shit! I got to put the other one. That's right. That's all blocked off. So anyway, um, I got a compliment tonight with my shaved head too. <laughs> I got to tell you about this. Uh, that Anna goes, like, she was saying something, but I couldn't hear what she was saying. So I was like, okay, well, whatever. And she was, like, making all kind of funny uh, stuff, right? And I'm like, what are you saying? She says, you look hot like Jason Stamith. I'm like, okay, that's good. Then that works for me. So, yeah, there we go. It's a lovely way to give me a compliment tonight. So I was like, okay, good. <laughs> it was cute. Um, I went up. I did Midnight from... Uh, uh, Joe Satriani, uh, like a spin-off on that. I told a ridiculous story about the power of the SG guitar. And uh, it went over well. The Johnny B. Good wasn't as tight as I, I thought it was going to be. Like, uh, I got that Andre guy up on the drums. And, I, again, I kept, follow, I kept falling out of time. But uh, I don't know, maybe just because the bass wasn't there. And the, but I did Rocker from ACDC. So I was like, okay, well, that, that'll work. And... Uh, Halfway through the song, the uh, host uh, for tonight jumps up, and I was like, kind of waiting to get plugged in. He kept on plugging himself, so it's like, I, I, like the song was pretty much over, but I was trying to drag it out a bit, timing going all over the place, and you know how these things work, right? And uh, it was really funny, uh, but we, we we jammed it out, and I made a lot of noise and all that good stuff. Uh, it was just really, really good night. Okay, I gotta. Okay, come on, Starship Enterprise. Here we go. Here we go, man. That's foggy. That's going to be a foggy night. Over. All right, so I'm going to build up my speed now on the ramp. And 60. Come on. Oh, wow, that's crazy foggy. I'm not like this. Uh, 60. 80. It's a big hill I got to make here, so it's like... Everything goes dead, it's because I crashed. Alright, there's a deer in the middle of the road, but I can't see nothing. Sort 
uh, go up. I played that bit, uh, a little bit of Always With Me, Always With You, just to give people some, you know, dynamics of the SG. But, uh, oh, there we go. Hey, shifted into the next gear. Nice. Oh, the fog clear. Nice. Um, oh, I can see the stars. But anyway, what happened was, uh, the SG, the guy, the guy owns an SG too. He owns an SG standard. And I said, okay, I just need to know what your clean channel is. I need to know what your, uh, dirty, because he had a pedal board. I was going through a pedal board. There had to be like 12 different effects there, and I didn't know what he quite had. Uh, and he had a, a digital tuner, which was really cool. Uh, and I let him tune it because I, you know, I didn't want to be up there tuning it. My pitch pipe tunes me exactly half step sharp. So if I, I figured if I pull up a bass player, everybody's in 440. I'm in 440, slightly sharp because I got a, my uh, tuner. My, I gotta get a battery for my other tuner. So he goes up, he tunes it. You know, just to bring it to pitch, because he was quick. He was he was more used to it than I was. He's one of those boss tuners. So I tuned the guitar. I got the guitar. It's perfectly in tune. Nice. Uh, then, oh look at that! The highway's running. Look at your table. The brakes here. Okay. Okay, that happens. Is that it? Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's like. Take the highway here is uh, the um, what's called uh, it's it's blocked off the other way. Uh, so anyway, uh, I, I do the midnight thing. Eh, it kind of catches people off guard. Now, it wasn't a big hit, but uh, you know it, it sounded cool. I mean, I'm making the assumption that he had a, a Deluxe Junior, well, the, the Fender Junior on there. So it's a, it's a tube amp, which sounds fantastic, nice warm sound on the SG. But it was all through these effects and everything, and I didn't want to touch the volume on the on the amp. You know, he had it all set up for the Telecaster and stuff like that. So I think my guitar was a little bit overbearing on that. Not quite enough gain and compression uh, to get the effect I wanted. So I probably should have played through my own amp. Just because, uh, you know, I know the settings on it and stuff like that. It's different when you have like 15 minutes, uh, you know, or 5 minutes to really. But I don't like to, I mean, there was a full, there had to be 12 people went up today. And uh, it just kind of went out and went. But then uh, I did Rocker from ACDC for the second uh, the, the second song, I say. And I just kind of went all over the place with it. And I had fun with it. I don't know how it's going to come out on the, but uh, you know, it fell apart a few times. Uh, all my fault, nobody else's. Uh, but I think I was losing the guy, uh, you know, it's a little bit too sloppy or whatever. Um, whatever, it was, just, it, it was one of those things, so I just kind of, it, it's just the way a jam nights go sometimes. But it still sounded pretty good, it was still pretty, uh, pretty rocking anyway. And of course I started shredding and stuff like that, and then the guy jumps on the bass, it's like, okay, well where do I end it now, you know? I was just like getting the ending, and he's plugging in the uh, bass, then the bass unplugs it, he plugs it in again, and I'm trying to get him up to speed. Uh, whatever, so I, again, it kind of fall, fell all over the place. 
But it was, you know, your classic rock, so it wasn't too bad. And my god, now I can only see about 30 feet, so I'm gonna take this down. I don't know if truck by I wish, but my foot weighs on My god, that's probably your long side of the river here. You can drive with the little beams on here. The problem is, is that, you know, like, when you're driving in this kind of fog, they say it's best just to maintain speed, but if there's anything in the road, I'm dead. I miscalculate one of these crazy curves here. I'm dead. So, uh, yeah, so I'm gonna slow it down. Just so if I see lights behind me, I'll speed up a bit. But we just logs out the river here. It's pretty bad. Uh, I mean, I'm like the worst one. Is it snowing now? Fog and snow? No way. Are you kidding me? What the hell? Like, um, 
yeah, it was awesome. You know, they're, they're here, like that kind of play. But again, these people have jammed together before, so they're really tight, right? And they're used to the, the same style, like that blues R and B stuff. So they tend to fall in line with each other a little bit more. Where tonight, I gotta say that SG was real. My '61 reissue was really, you know, like it was it was an un, untamed stallion up there tonight. Like I was just sitting there, the thing was just starting to, to, to you know, the feedback on, you know, like it's like it's like come on, ready to go. So I'm like doing like little Tony Iommi trills. But I got to play a freaking Black Sabbath song, so that's that's pretty cool. You know, even if it didn't go 100% according to plan, um, I shortened it up a bit just because it was, um, you know, like it's one of those things. You don't know how it's gonna go. I'd, li I'd like to chat with her again because uh, this lady has a great set of pipes. Uh, she could sing like you wouldn't believe. But it's one of those things that you know you, you got to get familiar. Uh, and one thing with, uh, like, different types of guitars on stage will make a difference in how, especially, like, she was like, well, that, you know, like, it was a little bit on, like, the guitar was drunk, like, she couldn't hear herself. Uh, and, I, and I understand why, because we didn't, uh, we didn't douse the volume. I could have done it on the guitar, but then you lose all the drive, right? Uh, so I didn't douse the volume of the guitar. And like I say, my SG probably, because of such a power, you know, we got full humbuckers instead of single coils, you just have so much push it volume and growl there that it can be a little bit overbearing so I, I probably should have notched the amp down a little bit just to uh, to uh, you know, so that she could hear herself better but it still was very cool I was very happy to do that but next week I'll bring out hopefully if I get another string uh, for on my uh, SG3 I'll bring that out the flying bee will come out last here's the road oh there it is no, I'm still on the road good good But I gotta say, the last song, the last set of the night was uh, was uh, Kate Besselin there, and uh, she's a fantastic musician, fantastic musician. Um, she's been doing it for a while, you know, like since she was like ten, yeah, that type of thing. Uh, all original stuff, and I, I gotta start pulling out some originals too. But you know, I'd love to get up there with a couple of guys that uh, you know you can jam with. But I mean, I really like to do a jam night. But sometimes, like I say, you do the jam night, it's not going to be as tight as you, you think unless you're doing the same jam night songs every time. But I never play the same songs twice, with the exception of tonight, where I this is I played Pipeline twice there, and I played Midnight twice there for Joe Satriani. And I really didn't know what else to do. Uh, but, I mean, I could play the electric by itself, but it, it sounds a bit hollow, especially after everybody's going up there and, uh, you know, belting it out with the, you know, the bass and the, the drums and the guitar and you know, like that. I really want to keep the whole band up there. Oh, there's a trucker. And hats off to all the truckers out there in this fog, trying to get us our stuff and all the crap we don't need. Uh, you know, it's all, probably about 1.30 in the morning now. Foggy and snow on the long side of the river. Just putting home. Uh, but it's not bad. It's not bad. Oh! Look at me in this lane. Okay. I'm planning to make it home. I'll be back again next week. Uh, I met some really nice people today. Really, really great people. I got a little out of control today. I gotta say that. There was this, uh, and I'm not judging, but there was this uh, kind of. This lady looks like she'd been to prison a few times. <laughs> Song out of it tonight, so that was also really cool. 
Yeah, you're slowing down now, eh, buddy? Yeah, yeah, that corner kind of caught you off guard in the snow and the fog, eh? I wonder if some of these truckers crash. You know, I respect them and all, but, you know, you got to lay it off in the lane. Like, I mean, when you can't see, you drive like a fool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's only money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I'm going to see you guys later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, Everybody was just so good today. You know? um, Anna didn't get up well. She got up and sang a few backing vocals. There was like 12 people up there today, but there was a guy I seen him. There was a guy playing her mom a couple of, a couple of weeks ago. He gets up there with a ukulele, pulls up the entire band. He has a bass, electric guitar, and the drums going, and he's just rocking the place with this little ukulele. It was just, it was really, really cool. Now being Halloween tonight, uh, making this video, it was uh, one of those strange things where. Uh, trying to do some Halloween theme night uh, songs. Uh, so they did uh, was it the Witching Hour, not the Witching Hour, I think it was the Witching Hour, whatever it was. They did that song, somebody did that song. And then somebody did the Monster Mash song. I got some sad news about the Monster Mash song. Uh, many people probably haven't realized that. I really re realized, recently seen a meme about the Monster Mash song. But the, the song, the Monster Mash, is about a song called the Monster Mash. That means we never got to hear the original song. What gives? You know what I mean? Yeah, like I mean, I'm kind of like upset about that. It's like it's because it sounds like it would have been such a great song. It's like uh, the Tenacious D song, the best song in the world, tribute. You know, but what was the best song in the world? You know what I mean? Like these are the thoughts that torture my mind. Next to how the hell do I get through this damn fog? But you know what I'm saying. You know what I mean? These are, these are these are serious questions. Oh, okay, yeah, there is curve there. <laughs> if you guys could only see what I can't see right now. <laughs> but it's going in batches. I'm getting away from the river a bit, so it's kind of like, okay, not so bad. Uh, it's always been like this uh, on the Highway 105. caution light here uh, years ago and this happened at that caution light twice where go, there's a cable that goes across the river a helicopter pilot about 30 years ago crashed hitting that line about 10 years to the day pretty much 10 years to the day uh, a small airplane uh, got caught in the fog and he hit the same power line and well everybody was killed of course very very terrifying uh, and now we're in the curvy curvy stuff but then we'll be away from the river what a what a what a what a just fantastic place, you know. Uh, uh, it just it was so good, you know. It's, it's just so good, guys. It's like a mini renaissance for me. You know, I, I really, you know, I can't wait to play a full night there. It does make me feel good when I see people up and dancing and stuff like that. And uh, you know, yeah. So the Johnny Be Good fell apart a little bit. The uh, the rocker song really fell apart. Uh, I probably dragged it out a little bit longer than I probably should have, but it was still fun, and the Ferris Wear Boots didn't go quite as corny as the plan, but it still sounded pretty darn cool. But, you know, when people jam with people they've never met before, uh, it's like that, uh, how do you say his name was again? It wasn't Mark. It's something along that lines. Anyway. It's like last week. It sounded like the three of us, three strangers walked on stage, and it sounded like we we uh, been playing together for 20 years. He's like, oh yeah, yeah, no, that was awesome last week. We got to do that again. Truck. And uh, yeah, you know what I mean. Like it's just it's just really cool. And then you've got this other thing that's going on where uh, you know, like I say, you jam with somebody that doesn't never jammed with you before they're not used to your style sometimes it goes well oh yeah okay that's a curve that's a curve yeah, you slow that one down maybe I should stay on my side of the road too yeah. uh, but anyway uh, yeah but at the end of it it's like um, you know you're you're playing songs with people that you've never jammed with before and sometimes it's hit and miss uh, but it's, it's usually always pretty good you know it would have been cool to have the drummer up there for various wear boots. You know? 
Uh, because I do know the song and stuff like that. And, uh, it, it's like if you can pull it off, it just it goes over so well. But if you don't, it, you know, it still goes over pretty cool. You know. You know, but it was just cool to let that SG kind of rip a little bit tonight. Uh, it would have been nice if I was a little bit tighter, but that's what next week's are for. Um, I probably should have played through my own amp, but it was nice to play through that little, uh, uh, you know, Fender Junior or whatever it was there. Uh, it, it's it's still a lot of amp. Don't kid yourself. It, it's basically a smaller version um, of my Hot Rod Deluxe, which I was telling, uh, you know, um, a couple of guys in there. Break the sound, man. I was like, yeah, I was gonna bring out my deluxe, but then blow the windows out of the place. Oh, I know. He goes, I have a Deville, and it's just, it's too much. Like, you need to be on a big place for those amps. He goes, I can only put it up to three max. You know what I mean? Like, it's just, it's too much. Uh, and it's true. Like those amps, like you get all the boost of power all at the low end. Uh, so it's like uh, from zero to like four, you get the like, crazy volume out of a, a deluxe series, the Hot Rod series, like the Deville, the, the, the deluxe, like mine. Um, and then it, you just get a little bit more after, but it's just like you need a much, you need a really loud PA for that. But it just it sounds so nice because it just screams and howls and does all kinds of crazy things. This thing wasn't too bad. Could have been a lot more gain on it though. But again, these guys they don't normally play with as much gain. As, like I'm a metalhead, so I'm used to like distortion gain. Uh, you know, like that kind of stuff. They're, they're not used to that stuff. So they don't put as much on it. So you got to work a lot. Like tonight, I had to work a lot more for my solos. But they weren't bad. They weren't bad. They were wholesome sounding. Um, but normally, if you have enough gain, you can just really shred the crap out of it. You know what I mean? And then, of course, I do all those crazy train wreck things at the end. And whatever. I was trying to Marty McFly it a bit with the Johnny Be Good, but I, I, didn't, I wasn't quite able to, to knock it out of the hack there. It was an oldie but a goodie. Everybody liked it, you know what I mean? Uh, I, but I have a good time on it. So, next week, we're going to bring out the SG3. I don't know who the host is going to be next week. Uh, but uh, I hope there's drums, kits, and stuff like that there. You know, I don't mind being the guy that they raunches up the place. But uh, I got to say, I wasn't the raunchiest guy there tonight. Um... There was uh, a Nine Inch Nails song sung there tonight. I wasn't expecting that from Greg at all. It's like, uh, especially up there in his shark suit, <laughs> you know, with his chest hairs hanging out, uh, singing uh, the Bleep You Like an Animal song uh, from uh, Nine Inch Nails. I was like, then he, then he ran it into something. I was like, okay, that's pretty raunchy. There was a couple of people, older people in the audience who were like, whoa, <laughs> that's a pretty raunchy song. Uh, but it was good. It was really good. Uh, I, 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 I just, yeah. Uh, I like it when it rocks out like that, too. Like, uh, the rocker song, I wanted to go a little bit crazy on that one, too. But, again, I couldn't tighten it up enough. And I was missing some changes and stuff like that. And, again, I guess maybe maybe the stage volume was just a little bit too loud on my end. Uh, but, again, like, it, it happens, you know. Uh, but that said, that was the first time I played my SG-61 reissue live. And uh, there was a nice lady in the audience. Uh, she uh, she was nice enough to get some pictures, so hopefully they came out. And uh, it's just that was kind of like uh, you know, oh good, the fog's gone for now. Uh, I can see the road again. Nice. Um, but uh, you get the idea that it, it's just like one of those uh, one of those things that it just it, it was just it was such a good night. But I almost enjoy sitting there just listening to people as I do playing. But you know, no matter what, I, you got to get out there and you got to do things. You know, you, you, you can't. I heard somebody say something really good the other day. I'm going to try to power, uh, uh, do a phrase. Uh, what did he say? He said, you know, inter well, he was talking about interacting with women, but he goes, uh, talking to women is part of the interaction or something like that. But that just goes with people in general. And I mean, it's nice when you meet a whole bunch of people, uh, you know, it's like, it just, it, it, it makes life interesting when you're always meeting new people. Oh my god, this guy's really dumb. What kind of fool drives that fast in this kind of fog? Just a little bit of fog. I don't know, get rear-ended. Uh, but yet, 
the idea, but uh, yeah, definitely a great night. Uh, everybody was, the place was packed. Uh, my SG was ready to rip into the whale, and that was fun. It was a lot of fun. Very enjoyable. Um, we'll do it again. Uh, I was a little bit nervous bringing my SG uh, out to uh, out to the bar because you know it's a very expensive guitar, but that's a, you know like I, I kind of feel ashamed of myself not playing that in front of people previously. You know what I mean? Like I mean, it's taken me nine years to bring that thing on stage. Good debut. Uh, that said. It's uh, the uh, S uh, SG3. That one has been on hasn't been on stage yet either. Uh, I don't think it has. Or has it? No, I don't think it has. And that one I've had since 2006, so that's even worse. That's like uh, you know, uh, 12 years. I've had that guitar for 12 years and it's never played on stage. Why? But a lot of it was, you know, I don't take those expensive guitars out to jam nights, but with this many professional musicians or really good musicians, I'm not worried about jam night trunks as much. Although there was one lady there tonight, again, uh, she was pretty out of control. She looked like she'd been to prison a few times, all kinds of tattoos and things like that. Yeah, I think she was a little bit of a lesbian. I'm not, I'm not judging or nothing like that, but she was like hitting on all the women. And I think she was hitting on the men too. Uh, she was pretty raunchy. She was sort of trying to lift her top. Uh, it was just one of those nights, right? So everybody was having a good time. So as long as she had a good time, she didn't take out any tables. <laughs> you know, it was just, it was just funny. You know I mean? uh, but uh, long story short, um, I keep saying that tonight. I don't know why. Uh, it was a really great night. Uh, it was just so much fun. Uh, sound, everything sounded so good. You know, it's just like uh, it was just, just such a great night. You know, um, really nice to hear the musicianship there. Uh, you know, like again, a little bit of an unfair advantage uh, on the other guys, but not not. This is not a bad thing. It's, you know, when they when they play that tight, and then you go up and you're not quite as tight as they are. But that's okay because. At the end of the day, it's like, uh, you know, like, it's all enjoyable, and then, even if you're not super, super tight, most people don't really notice, unless it really falls apart a lot. So tonight, again, I, I, I had, you know, uh, total different songs uh, set out for tonight, but uh, what ended up happening is the night just started out so raunchy. I mean, there was hardly any ballads tonight at all. It was hardly any... Uh, you know, it was a fast night, you know what I mean? So I couldn't go up there and play ballads, you know what I mean? Like, there's just no way, that's not going to happen. Uh, it's different for uh, the ballads that uh, Kate did, uh, because, uh, you know, they were her own, you know what I mean? And the last song, again, the last song that was really good, you could tell she was, like I say, getting a little bit of emotional singing it. Uh, and that's the thing when you write songs, uh, you know, and, and I understand it totally, you know. When you write songs that are like, uh, you wrote about something that means something to you. Uh, it can sometimes, yeah, people can get uh, emotional uh, trying to sing them. And so that, but she just nailed it, like, so professionally, you know what I mean? And, um, and it's kind of like uh, the song Let It Be for me. Like, I, I can't sing that song. Uh, I, I'm, I'm trying to sing it, but I can't. I get emotional when I sing it because I was play, learning that, uh, well, I already knew it, but I was starting to play that song again when my mom passed away years ago. Uh, you know, it'll be, you know, well, that'd be, uh, it'll almost be five years. It'll be five years next year. It's been four years, right? So I, I can't play that song live. It's just, it's just I, I'd, be a, I'd be a wreck. So I, I admire when people can do that. Um, there's, uh, was it, uh, uh, I guess he's either Scottish or he's, uh, he might be Irish, but he said, I think he has more of a Scottish accent. He might be Australian, too. Um, Greg's Australian, but, uh, he, he played Let It Be one night. I, I, you know, I gotta say, I was starting to choke up a bit. It was like that, it was just brilliantly done. But he went up there tonight, and they, they really rocked it out. That was so good. You know, two guitars on the stage with the drums and the bass really rocked the thing out, you know what I mean? I love that. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, but yeah, 
um, I don't know if I'll ever do another duet with, <laughs> well, it wasn't really a duet, but it's like, okay, like, Anna, I want to do a song with Anna. I, I think she would be really, it's either going to be Anna or, I can't, how rude of me, I can't remember her name. Um, if I, if I could practice it with her, run through a song, I'd love to do, uh, take a picture from Cheryl Crow and Kid Rock. And then dashboard light, but that one would need practice. It's not a song that you can just. It's like a fairy's wear boots. It's not that the song is hard. It's just if you're not familiar with it, you know, it's a pretty driving song. You know what I mean? It's a pretty. There's a lot of Tony Iommi goes a little bit crazy in there. But, well, not really crazy, but it's very riffy. And without drums in the background holding it together and stuff like that, it can kind of throw you off a bit, right? But, uh, yeah, I can see one of those two girls getting up there and just belting it out. And I'm like, yeah, just, you know, like, uh, whatever, you know. But, uh, again, maybe, maybe she'll try it next time. Maybe she won't. But uh, I, hope so. I hope I get to jam with her again because it was fun. But I'd like to get something that we both know for sure and we can nail it first time around, right? Because uh, she also, she sings, she has her iPod there, her uh, phone there. Uh, reading the lyrics as she's singing, so that's pretty talented to be able to do that. That's like sight reading, you know what I mean? Uh, keeping up with it. But again, like I say, if you're not sure on how the other person plays the song, uh, you know, it, it can kind of throw you off. So, but it's still, to me, was fun, stellar. Uh, I'll have to work on something really easy for next week. Just because I'd like to get something sounding really tight, you know what I mean, with, with some guys. Now, the Blind Pink Patriots uh, that I was jamming with um, last year, I want to jam with those guys again too, but I don't have the money to hit a jam night and that, you know what I mean? And I think they do it on the same night. So last year was on Thursday nights, this year, even though it's a lot closer to home. But I, I want to be in front of people when I play, you know what I mean? I like the garage, don't get me wrong, it's great, it's fun. And you can really work on things and get really tight with it. But I'd prefer to be on the stage in front of people. You know, give it to the audience, you know what I mean? And uh, I don't want to stay in the garage forever, you know what I mean? It's time to let loose. It's time to get out there and, and strike your stuff. So, yeah, so next week I'm hoping that uh, the, the, the bass player shows up again. Uh, oh, there was this girl uh, she dressed up like, I, I don't know, a satanic scarecrow or whatever it was, doing some really funky bass. It was just her and the drums. I don't know the songs. They're probably her own uh, or something like that. But she was just, she was just belting it out there. Uh, the mic wasn't really loud enough for her at first. Uh, so I don't know how it could have come out on the GoPro. But she was really, she was a pretty good bass player there. That's a real hippie chick, you know. <laughs> you know, like, she, oh yeah, she's just belting it out pretty good. And uh, enjoyable, just so enjoyable, so much talent. There. Some of the best musicians you never heard of, right in that little place. Uh, it's great, just great. Um, so next week, I won't have the Queen song ready for next week. I don't think, maybe. But it's one of those songs I'd have to do it by myself because that would be. That's a song that if. Uh, That's a song that if you play, the, the other person has to know what you're doing. And that song kind of goes all over the place. You know, like, you guys know, uh, well, you don't know because I won't tell you what it is until you play it. Um, so I think it's going to be really good. Maybe I'll just divert that one back to the acoustic. Uh, it, it, yeah, you know, but the thing is, is I want to get a really good, a couple of good songs that we can... Uh, Rock out. Like tonight, I was trying to go through my head and say, what would really go over really well tonight? So I kept it really simple. Uh, you know, because it was nice when the bass did come up, but it was like, it was a little too late. You know what I mean? But you know, again, it was fun. It was fun. Um, so I don't know, next week, uh, that's what I mean when you go to a jam night. You really want to do. Uh, do um, have yourself at least in the eight or nine songs ready to go in different genres. That way, if it's a lively night like tonight, you can just bash it out. Um, if it's a little bit more mellow, you could take it down a bit. If it's really mellow, you can take it right, right, right down. And um, 
again with the electric guitar it's a little bit of a hit and miss sometimes for that because with the electric guitar the problem you have is there's so much drive out of an electric guitar it is really hard to mellow it out you know what i mean like you can play pretty mellow stuff on electric don't get me wrong but you always have that electric guitar drive right um gotta say my SG sounded good today <laughs> like, like as soon as i plugged it in you know played it the guys oh wow that's a nice warm sound out of that you know like that big gibson growl you know what a great guitar that is um but I, I really got to get a, a full jam night to myself. Uh, yeah, it's just one of those things that I just, I just, I just enjoy it so much. And, you know, if you can start jamming with other people too, yeah, improvise, jam, whatever. Improvising is something that I'm used to doing at jam nights over the years. Uh, you never sound as good when you're improvising as when you, you know the song back to front. And it seems like it doesn't matter what song it is, it can be the easiest song in the world, but everybody plays everything different from each other. I don't know why that is, it just is. You know, like there's, it's just, you know, how come you know it different than me? You know what I mean? Just, I learned it this way, you learned it that way. And sometimes that throws people off. But, sometimes it doesn't. And I'm hoping next week, uh, you know, it'll be just a really, really good, tight, tight thing that I'm going to do. Uh, one nice thing about doing the instrumentals is that I can just do them all in one, one key. You know what I mean? So that you just, you can't get it wrong. You know what I mean? It's like, it's all an A. That's what I did last week. Everything was an A. There was no key change. It was just, uh, just playing around the neck in A. So that it just it, it followed a theme, but it sounded like I was doing all this different stuff. But I never went out of eight. You know what I mean? It's just it's an eight. You know what I mean? Like, it doesn't matter where you go. If you can play an A note or an A chord, you're, you're, the song the song will go. Uh, so I want to do stuff like that. But again, it, it's it's tough when uh, you know you want to do all these great songs, but uh, you know it, it's like okay, do you do it solo and. and, and whatever and miss out on the jam or do you just jam it out you know what I mean uh, and see what happens I, I kind of like doing both why because it's the mystery of what's going to happen I don't know you tell me it should be good uh, yeah and then uh, yeah it was, just, it was just a really good night um, I just I enjoyed it so much you know and again talking to people I mean last week totally different from this week and it seems like that's a theme. Like, you never seem to have the same people in there twice. That's pretty cool, too. I, uh, yeah, I can't wait to bring out, you know, once I run through all my guitars and stuff like that, I'll probably go back to the acoustic and whatever, but it's like, you know, I like having the electric on stage. I mean, that, that's my, my, my real kind of bread and butter, whatever having the, the electric on stage. Uh, playing along, the other thing too is playing along with the, uh, my, my pedal that has the drums in it. Sometimes you can get away with doing that too. But I prefer to have a real drummer there. Why? Because you can take the song all over the place. Uh, I think what it would have went over well tonight, but I didn't, you know, I would have wanted a bass player there to do it. Uh, would have been some Hendrix. That would probably would have went over really well tonight. Um, especially with the SG, you know, like it's such a ballsy guitar, you know, it just punches you in the face, it's so good. Uh, love it, love it. So, yeah, I, I don't know what I'm going to do next week. I'm going to keep my options open. Uh, again, if it keeps just getting lively, there's no, you know what I mean? Like, it, uh, the nice thing is I, I prefer to play rock and songs than ballads, but it's nice to do an, uh, the odd ballad too. But this jam night is really changing um, the last past couple of weeks, where it seems to be progressively getting more, wow, it seems to be progressively getting more rocking, where people's like, you know what, it's pain in the ass to bring out the drums and the bass, but it just sounds so good. And I'm not even just talking about me, I mean, it's just people in general, they just sound so good. So it's kind of one of those things where uh, 
it makes you want to do it. You know what I mean? It makes you want to uh, drag out equipment that you wouldn't normally drag out. You know what I mean? And the thing is, is like bringing my amp and stuff like that. I didn't really want to bring the amp, but the thing is, is when you don't know if anybody else is going to bring the amp, but I had a bit of a heads up that there would be drums there, so I was assuming if there's going to be drums, there's going to be an electric guitar there. Uh, so uh, the guy that was hosting tonight, I seen him uh, a few months back there. He wasn't hosting, but he went up and he sang a couple of his own songs. Um, the guy's really good too. Uh, he, he really rock, rock to do. So enjoyable. So enjoyable. Sorry. <laughs> a little bit sleepy. Uh, but yeah, what a great night. What a, a lot of fun. Everybody's so talented. That uh, Telecaster, what a nice sounding guitar too. Uh, I was telling like tonight, I was saying there's four iconic guitars that everybody knows, and that's Stratocasters and Les Pauls, but I said you have two of them on the stage tonight. You have an SG and a Telecaster. And yes, at some point, there's going to have to be an SG Telecaster jam. <laughs> you know, like, uh, it's just, what do I do? Like, uh, what, what can I work out that Greg, Greg and I can do where he can just let loose, and the guy's very, very good, and I can let loose. So I'd like to work something out now, because I'm going to have to jam with this guy. It just, it's rude not to, you know what I mean? Uh, he's, he's a really good musician. And I think we could really nail some stuff out of there, you know what I mean? Uh, it would be really cool. But we'll see. We'll see what comes out. But, uh, yeah, like last week with the Stratocaster, like the Stratocaster, but what had the SG last week, that would have been really cool because it, it would have been the right guitar for, the, for that. Where the Stratocaster last week was fun to play, but like the Telecaster, they're a little bit anemic on the heavy stuff I play. Where if you really want the punch in the face kind of sound, you need that SG there. Or Les Paul or something like that. It doesn't mean those other guitars don't sound good or have the drive, but they sound better, more melodic, you know what I mean? Uh, but they, they, it's all good. It's all so good. Just, yeah. So, get close to home. Uh, it was a good Halloween night. Oh, I saw my nephew tonight. He was, uh, my brother dressed up like Jason, and basically my nephew was a mini Jason. And it was really cute. Uh, it's like that. He was going trick-or-treating, so good for him. We got made off like a bandit. He'll be bouncing off the week, for, uh, bouncing off the walls for the next three weeks with all that candy. Oh yeah, getting some cavities and bouncing off the wall with the sugar rush. Oh, that's what kids should be doing. But it was a good night. There was a lot of costumes out there tonight. I forgot to bring my little costume, my little joke costume that I was gonna wear. Um, yeah, there were some pretty cool costumes. Uh, there was uh, the uh, waitress. Uh, she uh, came in with two Jaeger bottles and a bunch of uh, Red Bull cans strapped to her chest like a bomb with a flashing light on it. She goes, I'm a Jaeger bomb. <laughs> it, was, it was really good. It was really good. Uh, there was a lot of cat costumes there. Everybody was like the little kitten or whatever. Um, I think Kate was a uh, Lone Ranger. You know, she had the cowboy hat. Lone Ranger. There was another girl that was a cowboy. She had chaps on. There was a Cookie Monster girl. There was uh, a guy in a draft suit. Uh, the, uh, a bunch of the bartenders and barmaids were uh, cows. They must have been so roasted. Uh, uh, Greg was a shark. Uh, uh, that Mark guy, the bass player, he was a... <laughs> it was really funny because the guy's already tall to begin with. Yeah, but he was like a scarecrow from uh, Wizard of Oz. There was a couple of scarecrows in there tonight. And uh, he kept jumping up and down on the stage when he was. His hat was hitting the ceiling until he knocked that. Like he was just rocking it out. It was so good. It was just, just what a show. What a great show. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, it was just, oh, everybody having so much fun. So much fun. Uh, yeah, just, just so much fun. Yeah, what a great night. And it was nice to see that. I mean, there had to be at least 60, 70 people in the bar that all in if you added everybody up. Probably around that. So that would have been a good night to be getting paid, that's for sure. But, yeah, really good. Really good night. And, uh, yeah, I can't wait till next week. You know, like, I just, I enjoy this so much. It never gets old. I mean, it's magic, you know what I mean? It just never, never gets old. Um, what I was hoping for tonight was that 
that guy, Tim, that played my violin, that he would show up with a saxophone again. And uh, maybe next week he will. And, uh, what the hell was that? I didn't hit it anyways. say is that it would have been nice to have a saxophone on the, on the, uh, on the stage. So for next week, I don't know, like, again, there's a lot of rocket songs I can do by myself with just the drums, but it's nice to have that bass there. It just fills in so nice, you know. So if I have the bass and something like that, it does change it up, and it's just like, okay, well, we're going to play whatever. But i got to think more jam night songs that, okay, well, here's some three-chord rock that we can belt out, and then, you know, I can do more fancy stuff, you know, maybe one fancy song by myself, and then uh, do the rest, you know, three-chord rock songs. Like, I thought Rocker was going to go off really well because it's just a three-chord rock song, but it mainly stays in A, so it's really, really easy to do, right? Uh, but I, I don't know, I was a little bit loose on the timing and I kept throwing the drummer off, so uh, that was me. That was my bad. Uh, but uh, the guitar was a little bit on the raunchy side for that one, there's no doubt about that. It was a bit on the loud side. Uh, maybe a little bit on, a little bit too loud. But uh, there were people up and dancing, they knew the song, they, they were headbanging, they were dancing. Loving the ACDC stuff, they were loving the, uh, loving the, uh, you know, the Johnny Be Good. People enjoy it, you know what I mean? I enjoy it. I just enjoy it so much. Uh, and you know, if you're uh, worried about uh, going on stage and stuff like that, and, you know, don't be afraid to do that because I'll be honest with you, when you go on stage and you play and stuff like that, the first time you do it, yeah, the first few times you do it, you're going to be nervous or whatever. I don't really get nervous, uh, but I do get excited, especially when you got the unexpected of a jam night. You know, when you're just up there doing your own songs, no problem. Uh, but the thing is, take your time when you're up there. You, know, you always feel like you're going to be rushed. That you know you don't want to hold up the jam later or whatever like that. Uh, but yeah, if you're playing well, trust me. If you go a little over, they won't mind. But if you go like 20, 30 minutes over, yeah, 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 they're going to freak out on you. But if you're playing really well, like sometimes people don't care, right? But uh, yeah, what a great night! What a great night! Just fantastic. Well, I'm almost home now. The fog's cleared. I'm going to sleep good tonight. I got a road trip to do this week. I got to go up and get the oil spray for this stuff for my, my uh, lovely CRV here. I'll uh, probably do my Christmas shopping while I'm at it because, you know, do it all in one swoop. I don't really have a lot of money, but the nice thing about my nephew is he's only So it's really easy to shop for a five-year-old. Go to the dollar store, buy as much junk as you can for 40 bucks. And, uh, you know, it's about the numbers. With, with kids, it's about the numbers. You know what I mean? Uh, just buy all the cheap stuff. Um, great night. Great, great, great night. Uh, I enjoyed it so much. Uh, it was fun to jam with somebody else. Uh, it was fun to jam with a lot of people. And, uh, Holy jeez, I guess it snowed here. I'm going to find out as soon as I get out, of the, <laughs> get out of the vehicle here. But anyway, I'm going to leave it at that. Uh, just about home. Ugh, so close to home. Alright, so anyway, you guys have yourselves a great night.